Hi folks, welcome to this week's watercolour session. My name is Howard Jones and um, if this is the first time you visited uh, or looked at one of my videos then please um, consider subscribing um, providing you like what you see. If you stick with me I'll um, show you how I go about getting stormy skies, creating these beautiful stormy skies, very moody, very atmospheric and how we diffuse the landscapes that we uh, include in these scenes. Um, I've worked from um, a photo here that was kindly, do kindly donated to me uh, by a friend and uh, it's just an amazing sky. Skies can be fantastic. They can be a bit um, daunting to those of us that perhaps have not tackled uh, the controlling of paint in this way. So um, I'm going to give you a little taster here. Um, if you want the full-blown tutorials um, then do uh, consider popping over to my website howardjonesart.co.uk the link is below so you can check that out. Um, and you can, if you wish, uh, subscribe to the live Zoom tutorials. Um, these will soon be going out at a later date because I work from the UK and I know you, um, our folks over in the, in the USA, um, my starting time is a bit early and a bit inconvenient so I will be doing later uh, lessons very soon um, which will be um, in, uh, on a better timeline for the USA. So uh, please just drop me an email if you have any interest um, in this and uh, I can give you more uh, details. So let me just show you um, how I go about. I'll show you a few things here such as the the colours that I'm using, the paints, the brushes, sorry, and, um, and, and I'll give you an idea of the technique that we use to, con to control um, our paint in this manner. So as I say, you sort of, I've, I've worked I've taken the idea from this painting to create something quite sort of slightly more um, uh, contemporary if you like in my approach in the actual painting um, but I hope you can see that the sky is you know it's um, it's not copied exactly but um, the ideas come from um, these sort of photos and it's a technique that I'll use across the board on other subjects and other landscapes. So I have I've used the same techniques uh, really in not just the, 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 the background area of this painting. Um, I've also used the same technique in the foreground. So that's the thing, you know, this is the, the thing about watercolour techniques. They're um, the techniques that we learn for one um, uh, uh, one type of effect or one subject matter that can be passed on into other other areas of our work. So um, with no further ado I shall pick up my paints and brushes and uh, and get get going. So I'll just use this, I'll just use a sort of imaginary landscape here and I'm going to pre-wet. This is the um, one of the main things you need to do is to pre-wet the paper. Now there are many ways um, of painting these stormy skies and sometimes on another occasion I'll show you more ways than this. Um, I always think it's a good idea to have options um, in terms of your, you know, your, your skills and abilities, your technical skills. Um, there are other ways such as soaking both sides of the paper, working on uh, perspex, or I think uh, plexiglass you might know it as. Um, so they all they all offer slightly different um, options I suppose in the way you work. But I'm just as you can see I've just pre-soaked the entire paper here. This is the um, this I'm just using two brushes for this painting. That's this hog hair brush. Um, it's like a decorator's brush. It's a lovely brush. It's very um, it's it's quite brittle in fact and it might be associated for some people more with uh, oil painters and acrylic painters but I absolutely love it uh, in certain situations for watercolor painting um, you know the the it just helps you stay in that loose territory loose style so the thing to do is 
always allow the water to actually go into the paper because a lot of the mistakes I see, well, it's not necessarily a mistake, but it's something I think we should be mindful of because it does give a different effect. If you go in too soon uh, with your paint on that surface here, it will spread, which can be fantastic for some effects. But for the effect that I'm trying to achieve today, I always like to give it a couple of minutes because what's happening is the water sits, at first the water sits on, on the surface of the paper. Um, it hasn't really broken through that sort of, um, the size, you know, that's the resist uh, from the paper. When papers are manufactured, they, um, they use a size and it's basically um, for the purpose of stopping uh, it uh, performing like a blotting paper so it just slows down the movement of your paint a bit but um so let the paint go in first let the sorry let the water go into the paper first that it's broken down that sort of surface tension and before I start I'll just do one or two more passes of the brush because I want to start up here I'm working in a very warm room today we're having uh, exceptionally warm weather for this um, part of the world and um, my studio is very warm and things are drying out rapidly so there's still a sheen on the paper um, and I'm just waiting for that sheen just slightly to dull off a little bit I know for sure then that the um, that the water has actually penetrated the surface of the paper and, and, and that's why the other alternative the other option is to is to take your paper and soak it both sides. Now the only downside to that of course is that once a paper is wet you can't put a securing tape around it because the tape simply won't um, stick to the uh, wet paper. If you use brown um, framing tape, sorry if you use uh, gummed brown tape which is what we traditionally use for stretching watercolour paper that too will often come adrift if you're really using that much water so um, in another video I'm going to show you how we go about soaking both sides and uh, keeping the paper flat so I think we're ready to go in here and um, I always like to get the bright colours in first and this these colours that I'm using here I've got three different blues this is purely because I'm undergoing a little experiment just to sort of see the difference between these three blues they are virtually the same it's as it turns out so I think one is a, a cobalt turquoise the other is a, a, a cerulean hue which is a transparent tra uh, cerulean and the other one is a product product called um, turquoise transparent turquoise so this is going to get a f this is going to be delivered to quite a bit of this area to start off with but I'm keeping it weak keeping it certainly keeping it weak down here because I want to I'm imagining perhaps there's a landscape here with a uh, a river running through it and it's reflecting some of the blue of the sky so I start with the blue colors only I want that to be nice and vibrant so maybe um, maybe I'll put a diagonal movement in this painting so it starts sort of up here and the blue moves down the sky to about this territory like this. so the larger areas will be above us up here this sort of open space of blue blue sky now clean the brush off I've got this I've got gravity here. I'm on a slight slope with my paper. Um, slope is just off flat, and it um, it's fine for this type of exercise or painting. Let's see if we can turn it into a a, um, a finished painting by the end of it. So I'm seeing that it's drying off. When when paper buckles like this, um, it buckles upwards and it leaves troughs. And of course, what will happen is where it buckles upwards, like here, you can see that I'm pressing down. It's it's convex here, and it's concave there. So where it's convex, where it's coming up, 
that'll dry out first and so, so it will here too but in between these two areas is a trough is a concave area and that's where it'll take the longest to dry out so just be mindful of that um, I'm picking up another blue here this is a much different blue this is a, a an indigo but um, so let me just show you what I'm doing here indigo and burnt sienna so these are all quite strong colours in their own right but I'll also take some of the original blue that's already in the sky there but you can see how the addition of uh, burnt sienna warms that grey up now then so under these clouds under some of these clouds we have these dark areas don't be afraid to go really power really strong in this okay yes try to st mostly try to stay out of the blue area that you've that you painted but you have to do this quite quickly and I'm gonna have to speed up now if I don't speed up things will will have dried out much too quickly so I deliver this is my usual technique that I use for most things in watercolour pa painting. I make a delivery and then I turn my attention to distributing the paint out once it's on the paper. And this, what this does is it keeps your colours clean, it allows you to work quicker. Instead of mixing everything on the palette, I do a certain amount of mixing on the palette, but instead of mixing only on the palette and then painting the shapes on, I just get the delivery onto my paper and then you can hear me in my water tub here. Um, I'm cleaning the brush off but leaving some water in there. And I land this brush where there isn't much paint. So in here, in here. Um, and I just scrub around into those areas. Uh, um, and I'm pushing into the edges of the deliveries that I made. So you have to clean the brush regularly here. So and it goes again. I think we're going to have to get a sort of um, some sort of neutral area down here and over here and in a moment well, first of all I must um, you start using more paint again but in a moment you will see me pick up tissue and I'll start uh, rolling some thirsty tissue paper around um, and the brush again just moving the the a thirsty brush around just to make further patterns and shapes in this in this cloud. So I think I've de delivered enough paint for the moment. Just one more hit up here, maybe which re make it really dark in some places, particularly where we feel it's overhead. Now I'm cleaning my brush again, so it's a repeated process that you need to get into the habit of delivering, cleaning the brush thoroughly, leaving some water in that brush and then deciding where you're going to land this brush before you start moving the, the pigment around. Now that's going to look a bit strange so I'm going to push I'm going to lose that a little bit up there like that but all the time trying to be careful not to lose the shapes too much try, especially not losing the blue area down here that runs through in the diagonal. So I can still think about these shapes overhead here. I will put pick up some more paint. It's very very much a case of painting on the fly as it were or as they say. So sometimes ultra, uh, sometimes the indigo, sometimes the burnt sienna. I'm thinking of the undersides of some of these um, cloud uh, shapes, these cloud forms. Now if we're going further down into the sky in the distance these shapes will thin out like this and have a tendency to look more horizontal, wider than than these. They're not of course, these are very wide clouds but it's just the effect they have as, as you move down the sky. Okay so I've delivered I'm just going to clean the brush again 
picked up a little bit of the blue and delivered a bit into that gap. And I'll make some distribution again here. Let's see if we can um, use water. Just use water now to, to drop into these areas. Just drop the water in, then go to the water tub with the brush again and take some of that water out of the brush. And then again I'll take out some sort of looking at the ideas from the photo there's a lot of light on the tops of these clouds so if I concentrate on some of those areas the upper areas where there's the white of the cloud and how they billow they sort of billow across the um, the sky I think it's probably time to get some tissue, watercolour, uh, paper tissue here to start lifting out. This will be my land down here uh, eventually. I'm going to bring a little bit more of that uh, original blue in in places just to give a nice rich effect, intense effect. So I'd be up here. And down here, leaving some water in the brush. Now I'm going to distribute and lift out as well sometimes. So if I'm not actually moving the pigment around, I'm um, lifting out with a thirsty brush. Let's take a little bit out up here, I think. Have a nice burst of light, I think, about here somewhere. Um, if you've sort of followed, been following my videos so far, um, you've probably picked up the fact that uh, the way I paint, I, I treat every painting like it's an opportunity to improvise. I, I, I try to steer clear too much of, um, uh, of formulas. I do use formulas. I do use, by that I mean I'm um, calling upon things that I've learnt in the past, but I'm very wary that formulas can sometimes uh, lead to sort of a bit of stagnation in a way, sort of that you you paint the same thing over um, and you even paint different subject matters in the same sort of way every time so I always try to sort of find something slightly different each time if I can I can't always but if, if something comes to mind what I think I haven't I've never don't think I've ever tried that before I immediately do it and don't question it I, I believe it's the only way to improve um, I mean if you want to settle on you know, you're, if you settle on a formula, that that's fine, um, absolutely fine. Yeah, I suppose it just depends on your thirst for um, uh, for you know, sort of development. So, just go over here, and that does mean, of course, the the, the flip side of this is that. I may end up with more disastrous paintings than the than the person who doesn't work this way, but I'm I'm all right with that. I, I'm I'm absolutely completely uh, in acceptance of that. That's that's uh, I think the excitement of things happening that you not sure are going to happen, how they're going to happen, is over overrides that outweighs that. Um, that disappointment of a of a painting not going right every time. So I think I'm sort of nearly there. Let's try a, uh, rolling a little bit of tissue out. Uh, ro sorry, rolling paint off with a bit of tissue. So I'm just thinking that the of the very tops of some of these some of these clouds. I think we probably need a little bit more light. 
up in the top regions. And it's it's am amazing, I think. It always amazes me anyway at, at the amount of hard edge we can find in clouds in skies. So we think of um, clouds as as being very soft, uh, very soft edged objects, things, and uh, and yes, in, mostly they are, but. If you look and in certain lighting conditions, you will find quite a lot of hard edge shapes. I mean, it's very evident in this photo. You know, some of those some of those edges are very dark, and it's simply because of the exchange in tonal. It's a big because there are big jumps from light to dark. You're always going to find hard edges in those in those areas. So, I think I can keep working at this. Let's just go through some of this area now. Again, and I'll probably leave it like that for now. So I just want to put in a suggestion of land down here. And so I'll probably just go back to my burnt sienna and indigo blue but I'm still going to keep my eye on this because I can see new edges forming all the time uh, and I like that I like it so much in fact that I'm going to do this again so I'm, really all I'm doing is delivering a lot of water in this sort of diagonal fashion here right let's suggest uh, a bit of land down here So, given that we've suggested a very stormy atmospheric sky, I think we've got to um, darken the, the landscape itself. So, let's see what we can bring in down here. Maybe there's a a waterway running through the landscape. And just see if I can suggest that land mass and, and how the water weaves its way through the through the landscape there. So probably just need to break up some of those shapes a little bit. But before I do that I'm gonna pay attention to go back into my sky. Yes, soften off, I think, in places. I'm using Bockingford paper. It's a relatively cheap paper, but it um, I choose it purposely for scenes like this because of its... It's quite robust. So it takes quite a bit of punishment. I think I'm going to put some nice hit of that blue sky back in. I'm just cleaning the brush off again. And we'll have... Yeah, what about that? That's nice. I think we'll just like a little bit of water for some texture here. Little more dark in places. It's just such good fun to play around with your with your watercolors in this fashion. 
And you know, it, it um, j just keep in mind that it's all about the use of l lots of paint, a lot of paint, a lot of water. If you don't get both of those right, if you're not using enough water or you're not using enough paint, you simply can't do this. You'll struggle. So don't be mean with the paint. Certainly don't be mean with the water. I think all that's left for me to do really here is to maybe suggest something going on in the near proximity in this in this foreground area and I'll dry it off so I'm going to sort of by drying it at this stage I'm trapping it I'm sort of capturing it Just, we'll just take a little bit of reflection off. Off these shapes. Yeah, I think we'll put the mount, mount around this, um, or the mat, whichever it is you refer to. So in the end, I decided to go back into the sky. I just felt as though it needed uh, jollying up a bit. So I piled in with the um, transparent turquoise blue uh, back into the sky, simplified this um, with the large brush and put a bit of that blue, of course, in the reflection down here so that we brought some cohesion to the whole painting. And uh, yeah, I'm much, much happier with that. And again, um, you know, my, my, always the same point I, 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 I try to make, um, and, and that is, you know, it's good to take risks. It's good to um, just go with your heart, just go with uh, your intuition, your instinct, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and do the things that enter your head and don't question yourself, just do them um, and more often than not uh, you know you'll get um, you'll be rewarded for for taking that for being brave and taking that risk. So there we are folks um, as I say for the full um, unedited uh, version of these of this and other paintings um, do perhaps consider popping over to the website and um, booking yourself a lesson. I'd love to have your company. Uh, in the meantime, good luck, happy painting, and uh, see you next time around.